This video is all about chocolate and was inspired by these bins which are Hotel Chocolate Nano Slabs. So I should probably point out that this video isn't sponsored by Hotel Chocolate or any other type of chocolate company and also I couldn't find anything on the Hotel Chocolate um, advertisement or website which say that they use nanotechnology in their chocolate and the word nano in the terms of this nano slab is just purely down to it meaning small size compared to another product they make which is a slab of chocolate which is about the same size as an A4 piece of paper. But what it got me thinking was is there nanotechnology in the chocolate industry or is there any crossovers between the nanotechnology industry and the chocolate industry? So first of all we have to sort of discuss what chocolate is so chocolate is made up of three main components, which is cocoa, cocoa butter and sugar. And then to make milk chocolate, they add in things like milk and then some other ingredients can be added in as well. But I'm going to focus mainly on those uh, three ingredients and in particular the cocoa butter. So for chocolate, obviously it's got a taste, which people like, but most of uh, skill of a chocolatier is making a product that has three characteristics which are it has a snap to it it has a shine to it and it has a texture in the mouth which they call melt in the mouth so in other words you put it in its mouth and it actually starts to melt and have a nice sensation in your mouth and this all comes down to a process known as tempering so what a chocolatier does is they get their mixture of cocoa, cocoa butter and sugar and heat it up. And cocoa butter is a crystal structure, so it's made up of fatty acids and it's what's known as a polymorphic crystal. So the building blocks of that crystal can arrange in six different ways. And for chocolate, the ideal crystal is number five. So these six different crystal structures enabled one to six. And number five is the ideal one for chocolate. And the reason why it's ideal is because it forms crystals which are of the right sort of size to feel smooth in the mouth. If they were too big, they'd start feeling gritty. They exist as a solid outside the human body. So below uh, body temperature, which is 35 degrees. But once it's inside the body, i.e. inside the mouth, it starts to melt, which gives that melt in the mouth sensation. And also because of the crystal structure, it tends to be shiny and can be snapped as well. So it fulfills all three criteria for uh, ideal chocolate. We can also sort of see the ideas of this movement between crystal structures in chocolate is if you take a piece of chocolate that's melted, then you put it in your fridge or freezer to cool it back down to re-solidify it. It sometimes has like a white sheen on top of it and it loses its shininess. And that's because it's actually formed a different uh, crystals form. So chocolate is tends to be heated up to a temperature, then reduced down to 35 degrees, kept and then cooled down in a very controlled manner, which forms this crystal. And this is something that we do in nanotechnology quite often. We are quite interested in that as nanotechnologists of crystal structures and many nanomaterials or nanostructures are made up of crystals. So my own work involves zinc oxide nanowires, which are crystals. And some of my work has also involved annealing or heating these crystals to actually change the crystal structure and their properties. So there's a bit of crossover between the nanotechnology and chocolate industry there. But it goes a bit further than that. When we come down to things like quality control in the chocolate industry, they look at the crystal structure because if uh, they can tell what uh, crystal structure there is in the chocolate, they can confirm whether the chocolate has been made well or not. And they use an instrument called X-ray diffraction, where they shine an X-ray on this, uh, the surface of the chocolate and they look at how the X-rays diffract off and what diffraction pattern they give. And this gives information about the crystal structure. And again, we use that in nanotechnology a lot to be able to tell what sort of crystals are in 
a nanostructure. So these are sort of more sort of tenuous links between the two industries, but it does show a very important part of science that there is lots of crossovers between the dis different disciplines and having knowledge outside your key area of other scientific areas, in this case chocolate science, and translating them into another field allows for new developments and new discoveries. But there is some work which was published last year which actually does indicate some nanotechnology in chocolate. So what a group did was put nanostructures or make nanostructures out of chocolate on the surface of their chocolate. So chocolate, once it's been tempered, is poured into a mould to solidify and that's what gives chocolate its shape. And they used etching techniques to make the mould have nano features in it. So the surface of the chocolate ended up with nano structures on the surface. And what this did was be able to make the chocolate iridescent. So it had a sheen which changed colour depending on how the light reflected off it. And this is because the nano structures on the surface, when light reflects on or comes is incident on the chocolate and reflects off, it interacts in a different way with nanostructures. Because nanostructures are smaller than half the wavelength of light, the way that light interacts with it is different. So this creates this coloured sheen. So previously, chocolate has been able to have different colours and this iridescent sort of uh, colour into it. However, this has normally been made by adding chemicals and colourings to the chocolate. So this is the first time that pure chocolate has been made to have different colours just with chocolate, which is something that they are now trying to take to market. So over, you know, in a couple of years' time, you may see a chocolate that's no longer the sort of dark brown or brownish colour, but is multicoloured just due to the nanotechnology being used to create textures on the surface. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting and it's inspired you to look more into nanotechnology. If you've liked this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the like button. If you hit the bell icon, you'll get notifications so you don't miss any more videos.